Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, we're taking a look at Simon's brand new Kickstarter. The video that you're watching right now is going to be a gameplay video of the brand new Looney Tunes skirmish game. This is going to be Looney Tunes Mayhem, and if I have to say, before before we swing into this, we have the designer on standby, we have, we have two more uh, of my good friends who are playing the game, and I'm gonna act as the uh, commentator and videographer. This skirmish game starts off seeming like a, you know, fairly lightweight, family-friendly game, and then very quickly devolves into a strategic puzzle where you're doing your very best to time, react, place, move, and shift across the board. Uh, everyone, if you skip to the final thoughts, was thoroughly impressed with, uh, with this gameplay experience, and so I hope you enjoy checking it out. Before we swing in there, though, I do want to make sure I've pointed out a few important things. We are playing on Tabletop Simulator, so while this is a good way to show off the mechanics of the game, it's probably not the best way to physically interact with a board game, right? And so please keep that in mind while watching. This is going to be on Kickstarter, or is currently on Kickstarter while you're watching this, but it'll also be coming to retail sometime next year, in 2021. Uh, if you swing over to the Kickstarter page, however, you'll see that there is going to be a plethora, in true Simon style, a plethora of various different uh, stretch goals and bonuses and goodies, including some uh, fairly incredible miniatures that you might want to take a deep dive into, or at least a closer look. And along with that, this is going to be one of three videos. We also have Teen Titans, and we have the, uh, the ever-classic Scooby-Doo gameplays, coming out as well, so make sure you check out all of the content coming out from uh, Simon and Warner Brothers. Whatever the case, whatever you do, enjoy the video, and I'll see you at the end of it. Hello, hello, welcome to Quackaloop. Thank you for joining us. Today we're bringing you another, or I suppose a combination gameplay for the uh, the current Simon Kickstarter. Today we are showing off gameplay of Looney Tunes Mayhem with the uh, designer here, Alexio who's uh, responsible for the chaos that we're about to witness on the table. I'm also joined today with uh, Nat Nell, who is a, uh, a handsome young man from uh, from Central UK, uh, who's joined me for a variety of different gameplays and also runs and moderates basically the entirety of my Discord community. So thank you for being here and making sure that I don't perpetually fall apart. <laughs> and for the first time on the uh, Quackalope channel, Luke Jones, go ahead and uh, give a little plug to the stuff you're working on, buddy. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so for those of you who do not know who I am, I'm Luke Jones, a.k.a. Joker Jonesy, as they know me on the Internet. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that is called Brought to the Table, where essentially we just focus on just trying to bring unique perspectives and ideas to your table through tabletop gaming. Uh, we focus a lot on different tabletop games. The core one that we like to focus on is uh, Villainous from Ravensburger, but we do a, a large variety of other stuff. I run a show that's talking about the games I'm super passionate about. So if you want to go check that out, as well as our weekly podcast, Brought to the Table podcast, you can check that out there as well, as well as on podcast services around the globe. Cool. I'll have a, a link down below um, so that people can kind of find out what you're doing. Nat Nell, you can say hi for one second, and then we'll cut down here to Alexia. Hi. Somehow I just keep sneaking my way into the show. <laughs> for, for people so that aren't watching... Again. I know, for people that aren't watching, they're like, Jesse's really going after Nat No, 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 no. It's like one of my favorite activities. Alexio, can you give me a breakdown? What was happening in your mind uh, when you were designing uh, Looney Tunes here? And what is this game all about? This game is a skirmish game. When you try to do what uh, usually happens the, inside the cartoons of Looney Tunes, where uh, they kick us use traps uh, and do something silly every time. So I try to use cards, dice, and uh, placement of uh, all characters in inside the board to give that sensation, sensation of silliness that uh, usually you have when you see the cartoons. So all characters are based on their uh, quirk more than yep. on their ability. And uh, they use... Uh, uh, many strange objects <laughs> to do something a lot more strange. <laughs> so we put the Acme, for example, because the Acme is a good part of the cartoon that uh, give us the 
funny. Nice. So this is going to be a family level uh, skirmish game, right? Focused yeah. in this world. But part of the thing that we're already starting to realize from the uh, the first sessions that we've done is that this game is all about, like you're saying, chaos and movement and momentum. It should be when when yeah. you're not playing on TTS. It should be a quick like 10 to 15 minute session so you could play multiple rounds. You could go head to head with each other, uh, mm. do a best two out of three or switch characters throughout the uh, the middle of a gaming experience. But it's really trying to capture that essence of a skirmish game where everything and anything wacky and crazy uh, is happening. With that being said, uh, looking here onto the TTS mod, uh, Nat Nell, you're going to be playing as... Some would say the villains of this story. I mean, debatably, <laughs> debatably. Uh, you're going to be playing as Elmer Fudd and the Tasmania or Tasmanian Devil. Uh, you'll have a variety of special abilities, which we will dive into. Every single character has their own slight degree of asymmetric properties when it comes to special actions they can take, ways that they can react to characters, and special ways they can use their, uh, their dice or interact with the Mayhem dice specifically. Uh, over here with Luke, you're going to be playing as Daffy Duck and uh, Bugs Bunny. So both of you are controlling two characters, and you'll be interacting on this middle board here, trying to do one of two things. Either collect five victory points, both from moving into and accomplishing goals here on the, uh, the terrain board, or just knocking your opponent out. Your alternative win condition is going to be to knock out both of your players' characters in a single round or a single a single turn. Uh, that will result in a immediate victory. Uh, you'll see most of the uh, the game state and the way that this plays as we start diving into it. There's a lot to there's a lot of little things to go through when it comes to uh, traps and poison and the way that you interact with each other. And each one of these characters will be displaying all of that. The main thing you as the viewer needs to know is that we'll be interacting and uh, creating chaos here in the center. At the start of each round, we'll roll a die uh, and one at a time assign that die to a location on our character board. That will determine what type of special ability or special item you're utilizing. You'll then move on the board, resolving whatever location you move into. For instance, here at this house, you'd gain one victory point if both your characters are currently there, taking that victory point from the tile. And then you'll also go back here to the board and take whatever special action you decided to engage with, whether that is targeting someone at a long range distance, playing one of your mayhem cards to modify your die, uh, or just leaning into the chaos, pushing and pulling and uh, activating, uh, you know, as many tokens as you can. Did I miss anything, Alexia, or do I have a good sense of what's happening here? Exactly what we want from the game. Perfect. Uh, so, <laughs> so with that, with that being said, I'm genuinely excited to just watch uh, Luke and Nat. There, there's a reason I don't play two-player games uh, because I like to keep my victory streak perfect. As long as I don't go head to head against anyone on my channel, there's not a chance of me losing and you know embarrassing myself. So I, I appreciate you all being here so much. Let's go ahead and start diving into this. What do you say? I'm your fool guy. See, <laughs> darn it, Nat's now representing us. Nat, I need you to take down Luke. It's the only <laughs> it's the only thing that's acceptable. Although to be fair, Luke is playing uh, Daffy, which means uh, I I I do have to vote on behalf of ducks. Looney Tunes is a very duck forward <laughs> show, which I I. I as a quackalo very always much appreciate. Season. It's always well, duck season. That is, yeah, that is true. Well, with it's that being duck said, hunting season. Uh, nope, nope, nope. That's not going to work. <laughs> Before we swing into this, I do want to take a moment to make sure that we've thanked uh, Warner Brothers and uh, Simon for uh, for not only collaborating and making all of this possible, but then also Simon for uh, for sponsoring this video and giving us a chance to show off the gameplay for uh, for the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter should be launching. Well, at the time you're watching this, uh, with a ton of stretch goals and special, you know, special items and incredible miniatures. Uh, so swing over there. There'll be a link at the top of the video description. Check out everything they have in stock, uh, along with some other Warner Brothers properties that are uh, collaborating to, you know, to bring some really cool games to the table. And then it should be out in retail sometime next year uh, with a lot of the stuff, but not everything you'll find on the Kickstarter page. And with that being said, let's do it. Let's have a go. Let's do this. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's roll for it. Let's roll. So this roll is going to determine who is the uh, first player, right? It sets initiative. Roll the medium die too. 
I'm channeling oh. the spirit of Jesse through these dice. That is true. A one and a two mm. is a strong start here. And we'll I'll roll, the, and mayhem roll die. the mayhem die as well. Ooh. And a solid four for the mayhem die. Now, the mayhem die is going to have two different symbols. It'll have a number, which uh, relates to how much damage you're taking, what ability you're activating, stuff like that. But then also, it has a star. That star is going to be key for activating certain uh, environmental and character traits. Um, so there'll be different things that trigger that role, and uh, depending on if there's a star there or not, you'll resolve it in different ways. All right, take it away. All right, so I have seven, you have three, so I right, believe the, the lower number goes first. Starts. Okay, that is correct. Now, <laughs> where do I want to begin? So you'll choose one of your characters, and then you'll choose to assign your dice to their locations. Elmer Fudd here has the bomb, and then uh, Elmer's hair fertilizer, um, which is going to poison people, which is effective. And then Taz is going to have the Taz tornado and the fighting ring. But both of them also have special abilities. Nat, could you just go over what the special abilities for each one is? Yes, so... Taz has Hurricane Taz, which means at the end of his turn, he deals two damage to himself and all characters in his location and adjacent locations. So he's just a slow, ticking time bomb of death. Well, and then we have or a spinning Fudd. vortex of chaos, but... Uh, all that. <laughs> and <laughs> Elmer Fudd, uh, once per game, he can set the Mayhem die to any value of his choice. Nice. And the Mayhem die, like I said, will be this uh, big red die here in the center of the board that both players are interacting with. So now, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to place a die on, on Taz. Uh, unfortunately, these dice values are too low to actually be able to pull off any of his special abilities. But I have to do something with the die. And that's um, because the white and the red zone are two different categories. When you play a die in one of these two zones... If there's anything in the white zone, you'll be able to activate it no matter what. The red zone has a limiting factor. Your die value has to be equal or greater than in order to activate uh, that uh, that location. Indeed. Um, which I'm actually going to put it in the fighting ring. Because what I will do is move Taz into the uh, this sort of casino hex over here. Um, and when I enter this hex, I then have to roll the Mayhem die. And if there's a star on it, I'll gain a victory point there. Odds of there being a star? 50-50. Oh. And there we go. There's a star. So I'll get my white victory point. My first victory point. Okay. And then as, as um, Taz's ability, I get to place an obstacle, which is this little token here, um, which blocks off movement from one hex to another hex. And I'm going to try and place it here, but unfortunately the snapping points are in the way. Yeah, one of those one of those weird elements of uh, TTS is it, you know, makes snapping points. Uh, Alexio was was turning into a Tasmanian devil there for a little while trying to figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure by the end of this game it's going to turn me into a Tasmanian devil as well. Well, potentially. All right, and then uh, as Taz is literally a hurricane... Yes. He's going to deal two damage to himself and everyone in the, the adjacent hexes. Slowly, you know, slowly damaging himself, but also doing some significant damage to uh, the other team members there. Bugs don't, don't take damage because the, location, the obstacle removed the ADC. Oh, oh, okay. So maybe, so maybe you only should, he's going to take it. Maybe you shouldn't put that obstacle there. No, I yep. do. I do. All right, that perfect. still works in my favor, you see, because I'm sure you'll you guys will find out soon that Bugs has a bit of annoying ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Probably. So, is it my go? It is your go. All right. So I'm gonna move Mr. Bugs Bunny himself. So you'll start by uh, activating. Oh, that's one right. Of I gotta put one of these on, and I actually think I'm gonna put this one here. Okay, so it'll there. give you ranged, and it'll unlock your push-pull ability. And then I'm going to move Bugs Bunny to this house-looking place over here. Um, I do not get to uh, trigger its ability, because it requires sure. me to have both of my team members on that tile when they move there to pop off the effect, which is to gain a victory point. Yep. Um, then after that, um, I can now activate my ability. 
So since I actually have the value right here, so it's five or up, so it's five, um, I can perform a ranged attack, and then I can do um, this bottom half as well. So you go from top to bottom, left to right, essentially. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to perform a ranged attack on Taz right here, because um, I can't do that because there's nothing blocking me right there. Is, so is that what you were trying to avoid, Nat? Is that one of the things you... Uh... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ne I never know what I'm doing. Well, that's yeah. fair. We're getting crazy here. So I believe it's one damage that Taz will take. Yep, and that's because of uh, that's because of the star value over here. Um, no, it's because the, the value die? on the mayhem die. The value um, of the mayhem die. Yeah. Yes. Now that star will come into play here, because um, I am going to do some interesting things. So what I'm going to do is that so now I'm going to activate this bottom portion of my ability, which is pull. And then if I have the star, I can push uh, a character. So first thing I do, I'm going to actually pull has in over here. Okay. Now that we're in the same hex, I'm going to push him. So I'm going to push Taz over here. Okay. And then I believe that's all of my, all of my activation for Bugs Bunny. Okay, so now it's Elmer Fudd's turn. And with Elmer, I'm going to place this two dice on his Elmer's Hair and Fertilizer and move him so I'm going to move activating him. some poison potentially potentially we'll see if we get there okay so I've moved him into this hex here which means he takes damage equal to the mayhem die and then gains the victory point over there and thankfully um thanks Only to Taz one. it's now one so I'll grab that victory point and do one damage to Elmer. I mean an astounding lead uh right from the beginning uh, we'll we'll see how 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 I could Luke. I I gotta I, say, man, you're in trouble. I know this then, is not working out as well as I thought it was going to. <laughs> I'm gonna activate one of my special mayhem cards. Okay, so Madness. each player each player has four mayhem cards in their hand. You can kind of see them up here in the corner. Uh, the important thing about these is you'll either start with a pre scripted uh, uh, cards that are in your hand, or in later games, after you're ready to make it messier and messier, you'll actually draw seven randomly from the Mayhem deck and then choose four of those to keep throughout this uh, for throughout this session. Um, so the, the card you played, let's see what's happening here. It has a lightning bolt, so it can be played at any time, and it's the Mega Magnet. Teleport a character. Oh, no. Luke? Well, what I'm first going to do before... <laughs> before I activate this ability, is uh -huh. use my kill the wabbit ability. Uh, so I'm going to change the game. mayhem die. Oh no! Okay. So what's per game I can do this, and I'm going oh, to change no. it to four. Oh uh. no! And it's duck hunting season. Sorry, Jesse. Oh stop! Why are you <laughs> so, doing Daffy like that? <laughs> Daffy Duck can come join me. Uh. You will get the victory point. However, it's now four damage. <laughs> There's a higher <laughs> price to pay for that. Oh, yeah, dear God. Uh, here, I'll, I'll switch it out. Right, and also, take one of these off and I'll take a five. Grab a five. There you Have go. Have some of this hair tonic. It's good for you. Uh, no, apparently it is duck season, apparently, in these in these hunting grounds over here. Oh, so that was remember, such I a placed... good sequence. That was that was so mean. <laughs> Alexio, that was very mean. I'm sorry. Uh, it's one per <laughs> game, though, so I have to put this little token to remind me I can't do this again. Trust what type of monster? What type of monster made this game? <laughs> is it the giant you... red monster from Looney Tunes? Is it Gossamer? Whatever the heck his name is. <laughs> that guy? It's probably him. <laughs> Don't forget, I activated my poison ability this turn. So okay. Daffy can have a little bit of hair tonic as well. Poison, too. Now, poison what? is going to damage you in actually a really Daffy, cool Daffy's way. Daffy's taking some poison. Oh, come on. I got I, this. Uh, yes, I believe in you. I I actually and like what? the way poison works here. So poison is going to damage based off of its stack. So I, if you have two poison, do. you take two damage and it reduces by one. If you have one, take one damage and it reduces again. That means if you get a pile of poison there, you can kind of see when that player is going to be expiring. That that hair tonic is uh, it's very tasty. Put it that way. Um, and it's over to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's over at me. Um, no, you. So I gotta do stuff with Daffy, and uh, well, 
I got a place <laughs> to die down. And sadly, there is no way for me to activate said abilities based off the cards in my hand. Yep. Um, however, what I will do is that now that I place my die, I'm going to move Mr. Duck over here. And I'm going to snag Ooh. an Acme token. So when I land on this particular location, I get to take one of these Acme tokens. And then I get to add it to my particular character. And then that character can use these tokens whenever. Uh, the thing is, is that my opponent cannot see what these are. So yeah. I will see what it is, but um, well, and Matt will just not. just like Acme in the you know in the uh, cartoons, this is just going to be a crate that could literally have anything in the game in it. So the possibilities hmm. for how you're twisting the rules are uh, unending. Exactly. Um, I like the idea of like as you stumble onto that road and like start breaking open the crate, you just hear a beep beep and just flies <laughs> by. <laughs> I do believe that is all I can do based off what my token is. So, ah, okay. Um, that is my activation with the duck. But I'm sure that, there's I'm a gonna, nasty surprise in there. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. That was that was that was not the that was not the the move with the duck that I was expecting. No, that was not what I wanted to do. But <laughs> hey, what can you do? Um, so all I right. think that's the round. That's the round. You're going to bring your dice back into the center. You're going to uh, re-roll both of your dice and uh, re-roll this mayhem dice up here. This will uh, determine initiative once again. Ooh. Ooh. Snake eyes, except yeah. it's not eyes. Oh, <laughs> um, so I do get the initiative, so I believe it goes to me now. I get to do whatever I please. Um... Except my dice are not looking so hot right now. However, so I'm glad you all did a skirmish game with uh, with this Looney Tunes universe because it, it is the perfect uh, it is the perfect atmosphere. I got I got to do it. Uh, I got to do the correct order here. So <laughs> I am going to. Oh my gosh, cards. Um, I'm going to activate um, bugs. Okay. And I'm going to actually play this card to change that, essentially, to copy the values of my opponent's dice. So that's oh. a one and a six. And I'm going to change this one, you guessed it, to a six. So down there on the tornado box, so you're also getting the ability that when the die is on this item, your trap also stuns. Nice. Okay. Exactly. So now what I'm going to do, because um, it's not looking so hot for me. I'm going to go move over here to this uh, poker table looking place. And I get to roll the mayhem die. And if it lands on a star symbol, which it does not, <laughs> nope. um, I would have gained a victory point, but I do not anymore. But now I get to activate my ability, which I'm kind of okay with. Um, so what's going to happen is I get to place two traps at my location. So, oh, the snappiness of TTS is being snappy today. Um, and there we go. So there's two right there. Um, not, on, not on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and play What a Surprise. So I'm going to place two more traps at the same location where one of my traps already existed. So that's a, it's a heavy that's trap a location right there. Just a pile a of traps. Lot of traps. Um. So that's it. That's it for me. That's uh, Bugs' activation right there. So Bugs is just basically bunkered down in a poker room and just put like shotguns in all the windows. That's correct. Yeah. I think we're going to activate Elmer Fudd. And I'm going to pop this little one dice on his... Uh, <laughs> Hair fertilizer. Because you still get to do poison either way. Indeed. He just yeah. wants people to use his hair tonic, you know? I suppose you didn't take the damage of the poison at the start of the turn. Yeah, I was going to say, I, for, I was I was going to... I realized we forgot to you do take that. Take it at the, at the start of the turn, oh. not when you activate well, the character? I the round because the character can gotcha. go on uh, before the recovery. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah, so two damage coming over your way and one poison being removed. There we go. We'll go ahead and stack it on there. 
Nice. Is one yeah, of so the, the poison game. will actually activate at the beginning of the round before any of the characters would activate. Sure. Daffy because would actually, just in case if Daffy strategy. decided to become a, a, a trophy for Elmer's flood, uh, uh, duck season. Um, we gotta make sure we clarify that. <laughs> All right, so Elmer is gonna take a walk to uh, Roadrunner land here. Not a bad right. place to be. He's so gonna gain an Acme crate. Okay, all right. I'm gonna keep this next to me. Might come in handy later on. And then he's gonna shove a little bit more poison over to <laughs> Daffy Duck over here. Uh, two poison? Indeed. Oh boy. Really like that hair tonic. I'm just drinking it up. <laughs> Tasty. Oh, is is that what you're doing life. with it? I don't think you're oh, supposed boy. to be drinking it. Ah, that's the problem. That It would have worked. Mm. It would have worked if he just wasn't drinking it. I know exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. And uh, I believe that's probably going to be my turn. Okay. Well, so first thing I have to do, so I'm going to activate Daffy here. I'm going to sadly place my token, which I believe the stuff what I have. Boom. Right there. I was going to put on the hammer because why not? Going for the giant um, hammer. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I can use these Acme tokens whenever, correct? You can. Yeah. But only for the character that picked them up. That is correct. So, well, um, Daffy over here has got this box. And <laughs> he's hanging out with Elmer Fudd a little bit too much. And got a lot of that tonic, so he's going to actually give him some of that tonic back. <laughs> so we're going to actually poison go. Elmer Fudd for two um, while we're at this location <laughs> before we decide to move. Um, Ooh, hair tonic. I hear that tastes great. <laughs> I know. It tastes it tastes like strawberries. Um, because uh, Daffy is like, you know, I don't really want to, I don't want to really, um, you know, be KO today. We're going to move over here. We're going to heal two beautiful, lovely damage. Yep. And that will end it for myself. I, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. Your uh, your Daffy da Daffy Duck uh, moves are, are still not quite as strong as I need them to be. No, I, I'm, I'm trying. Have, I'm really I, trying really hard. But you know, I have a, really want the hair tonic lot. today. I have a lot riding on this. I just oh, I'm throwing that out there. I'm trying my best here. We got to represent the ducks. <laughs> Nat. All right. I'm having to think. I well, I can tell. I can tell one of one person's thinking. thinking. He just does things. No, no, no. One one person is pausing and thinking and and doing some pretty <laughs> impressive moves, and the other person is helter skelter and drinking a lot of uh, hair tonic <laughs> along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to wrinkly up my brain and come up with a high IQ move. <laughs> just all the wrinkles. So I'm going to put this six on the fighting ring ability. Okay. And play. This mayhem card, which will let me have a free move and grab me a flea token. So as for my free move, I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to get my flea token. Now, now Alexia, the flea token. The flea token give you a free movement when the, when another character moves inside the map. So, so when someone uh, else moves, you then get to activate that. Yeah, you, so you're it's a reaction. Uh, exactly, it's a nice. reaction. Or your opponent, or your teammate. Nice. Okay. Very cool. And now my chosen move will be to move over here. And as for the wrinkly part of this move, the wrinkly brained part of this move, um, I'm going to place an obstacle over here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Hang on. There's too many tokens going on over here. All right, you, you get the gist. That, that's where it is. That'll work. Now, for the red part of this move that I activate because this dice is higher than three, when the die is on this item, plus one damage to opponent's characters that are adjacent to an obstacle. Mm. And at the end of my turn, which happens oh, no. now, Taz is going to deal two damage to himself and all characters around him. Which is the entire board. Which is the entire board, including poor Elmer over here, but... But then Bugs and Daffy are going to take three, right? Uh, indeed. Yeah. Okay. 
three damage. Oh, holy cow. Some big brain plays right there. That was another very impressive move. <laughs> <sighs> well. Alexia did yeah, even look on a prayer right now. What, sorry? Fortunately, the I cards said, have been a bit sacked in my favor. I, I said Alexio didn't even know his game could do this, as far as I know. No, I, I <laughs> he had no idea. I moves like this is, is incredible. <laughs> well, All right, and I believe that is the end of uh, Taz's turn. And I believe nice. that's the end of the round. End of the round. True. All right. So Back from rolling. Gonna now we're going to take nice some poison damage well. here. Uh, so, at the top of the round. So you'll, you can roll first, take your poison damage. Okay. Well, let's roll. And cry myself to sleep because uh, poor Daffy over here is actually going to be KO'd. Um, oh. Because there's three oh, no. poison right here. So that would put him at 11, which is his hit point total. So uh, Daffy is uh, a spoiled sport. Now, I, would not, I will not try to do the voice because of the microphone. <laughs> um, you just gotta, you gotta back way up. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm not gonna spit all over my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> now here's, here's the, uh, here's the important thing with a KO. You still get both your activations. It's just both dice are gonna be played on your one character. Along with that, uh, your opponent is gonna go ahead and get one victory point. So you can go ahead and take one of your, uh, one of your ribbons, uh, because they successfully knocked you out. Now, Alexio, uh, health, poison, all of that resets. Uh, when you bring your character back onto the board at the top of the next round. Is that correct? Exactly. Cool. Everything uh, is resetted. All right, and Elmer is also going to take a little bit of poison because he had to have a little bit of his own medicine. So exactly. he's going to take two damage. Very Looney Tunes-like. Very Looney Tunes-like. So, yes. Have oh, we, we have to roll the Mayhem time? die as well. We need to do that. Uh, I you did that. I rolled, I rolled the, I rolled oh, the you mayhem. rolled it? Okay, never mind. No. Ah, okay. okay. All right, proceed okay. play. All right, first player is going to be Nat, right? Yep. Yes. What are you thinking? You've devastated your opponent so far. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to activate Taz again. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to pop a, a th this three dice on his fighting ring. Uh-huh. Again. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then he's gonna move. I have to choose where I want to move him, though. And I'm gonna move him. I mean, you are very close to closing out this game. Yeah. I'm gonna move him over here. Okay. Over here. And then uh as per his fighting ring ability, I get to place another obstacle. And I'm gonna place this obstacle over here and then I'm going to yeah um yeah yeah I'll do that I think that that that'll be it I'll end his turn and so he's gonna do his hurricane ability again and inflict mm -hmm. two damage on everyone and you know what? His... There was a mistake. I forgot to give him his two damage last round. So he should be on seven damage. Okay. Uh, and his special ability there, though, when the when the die is on this item, plus one damage to an opponent's character that is adjacent to an obstacle. Now, is that stack? Or is it nope. just one? Nope. Just one. Just one? Just okay, because there's two obstacles at this damage. location. So, so I'm going to take one additional one. So you're... Four damage away, my friend. I'm four Do damage you... away from a uh, certain you, you doom. You need to move the Bugs Bunny special ability. Oh. Or you forget it. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Now, because I did take oh. damage. Yeah. I do have a unique little ability right here. So, um, hopping around allows Bugs Bunny, whenever uh, he takes damage, to move to a different location. And you so forgot that, you forgot that last time, so you just took some, additional, you took some additional damage you might not have needed to. Yeah, I know. Well, it's fine. Um, huh. Huh. So, I'm going to move here. And I believe this space allows me to place an obstacle. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I'm going to actually place 
this obstacle on out oh, here. TTS is beautiful, everybody. Um, <laughs> for those of you who have uh, seen me do stuff, you know the, the joys of TTS. Um, so that's where I'm going to move. This actually is going to make my turn a little bit more fun. So at least get get a little fun uh, shenanigans with this. So We love shenanigans. No, it's great. Um, so it is now my turn. Bugs Bunny gets to do things. So mm -hmm. because Daffy has been defeated, I get to actually use both of my dice to put activations on these particular abilities, which is pretty cool. Still one at a time, but yeah, both yes, activations will time. be down here on Bugs Bunny. So Started there's one right there. So, um, and I only put one on at a time right now, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. So... We're gonna we're gonna move bugs to this location. So I get to roll a mayhem die. If it lands on a side with a star, I do get that victory point. And oh. curse you. <laughs> um, however, it's not all doom and gloom because um, first things yeah. first. Uh huh. I get to perform a ranged attack. So with okay. my ability right here. Um, I get to perform a ranged attack over here at Taz. So I get to, um, what is it? Deal two damage to Taz. So two additional or whatever. It has not so been dealt yet. This is where I'm going to play this mayhem card. Oh, Ooh. No. What do you have? Flower power. When an opponent does a range, prevent two damage. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stave off a little bit of that so I don't immediately lose Taz fine though everything is fine um <laughs> because what's going to happen is it's going to activate the bottom portion of this ability and this is where the fun really begins so i get to pull a character from an adjacent location to my location so we're gonna pull taz over here yep um now i don't know what the order of operation is uh does taz take the damage from these traps okay so taz is going to uh basically take a bunch of damage Four damage total, putting Taz at eleven damage. And I rolled the mayhem die. Yes, and then he rolls the mayhem die. Oh, that wasn't a roll. Mayhem die. There we go. Uh, still a two. <laughs> still a two. Um, then I get to push Taz. Nope, there is no star on the mayhem. Mm. Oh, there's mm -hmm. no star. That's right. There's no That's star fine. for you. I get to do. I I got to do what I wanted to do. That's fine. <laughs> still um, a lot of damage. No, it's a lot of damage, and I'll take it. That is my activation. All right, and now it's Elmer Fudd's turn. Now Elmer's going to activate his Acme Crate to reroll. Now, because you activated that, um, <laughs> you take two damage when you use your Act Acme token. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. nice. Elmer will take another two damage for doing so. Coming back. I'm coming back. <clears throat> All right, well, hopefully he'll get a good reroll on this. That is much better. That is uh, much, yeah. much better. It's a stronger reroll. Okay. Yeah, he's going to pop this uh -oh. five here. Uh-oh. He's going to activate Ooh. his bomb. But first, he'll move over to this hex here. And then chuck a bomb over to Bugs Bunny over here. So I'm going to take two damage. Yep. It would have been more if there was a star, but there is not. Thank. Thank Acme for this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> now, there are no more obstacle tokens, I've just realized. Does that mean we can no longer place any obstacles? Can move or place an obstacle. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Obstacle or I gotcha. Ah, okay. So, okay. Yeah. And uh, that will be the end of Elmer's turn, I believe. There's nothing else for him to so, do. So nice. Good old. Oh, if you may, if I may, may I use the teleport ability on Bugs Bunny right now? Yeah. You... Uh, Bugs. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Moving back here, so I can move an obstacle. So, um, 
I'm gonna move this right here. Um, I'll I'll, I'll let you guys uh finagle that one about. So I took damage. This is why I'm able to move bugs. Um, so now I'm gonna place this die right here. Mm hmm. I'm gonna move bugs back over here. <laughs> you really want roll that. the mayhem die? <laughs> oh come on! At this point, RNG Jesus. Here we go. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's a star. That's a star. It's not just a star. So now I'm gonna activate my ability here, which allows me to place two traps. However, I can't place it directly at this location, which is kind of where I kind of want to put it. Um. However, what I am gonna do is that I'm gonna actually place the two traps at this location. There you go. So that way, Taz moves over here, Elmer moves over here, because they're all blocked off and stuff. They don't have to, uh, they don't have to worry about that. So, I believe that's it for me. I got my victory point. I got to put some traps out. Feeling cool. pretty good right now. I feel in a very much better situation than I was at Turnigal. Yeah, you you survived longer than I expected you to. I'll yeah, say there that. There you go. I know we're the <laughs> no. game's not over till it's over. So, how does Daffy come back into play now, Alexia? You have to put uh, Daffy in one of your base. One of your so, base positions. Uh, yes. So Daffy have black and can choose uh, one of the two. One of there is uh, Elmer or the other one. We know one. If uh, one uh, of your bases is full, you have to choose the other one. So a very yeah. flattened Daffy Duck just sort of unwinds himself and like fills his thumb up with air again and is back. Yeah, into the because game. like in the cartoons, no one is killed. Yeah. All are mostly KO'd or stunned. And later in the, the scene, later have uh, them back for life. They're, they're right back at it. Uh, and we're going to roll our dice and be back into the swing well, of it. Yes. And Elmer's going to take that last poison hit as well. I'll Good. His dice first. Good for him. He deserves <laughs> Good. it. So I'll put after, this over here. After I'm what he's done damage. to the ducks here. Oh. How, much, how much damage does Elmer Fug got over there right now? He uh, has eight uh, damage. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, do we need to reroll this die? I just rolled it. Oh, you just rolled it? Okay, <laughs> so we got the one. And we were tied. So we yep. both have five. You have to toss uh, the initiative coin, but you cannot on... Uh... On tabletop, so flip it. Boom. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Luke, it's all you. <laughs> um. So. Uh, oh. 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 I have things, things to do. Um. So. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to activate um, Bugs Bunny. So I'm going to place this die over here. What I'm going to do is going to play this card to add two to each one of my dice. So this one's going to become a six. Mm. This one's going to technically become a three. I'm going to move Bugs Bunny over here. Okay, you don't get affected by your own traps, so... No, I do right. not. So, and this ability does not work yet because uh, I need to have both of my characters here in order for this to work. Yes. Exactly. So, then I get to um, activate my slingshot, which allows me to perform a ranged attack. So, Taz is going to take one damage. Now, at what point can I activate my flea token? After uh, he moves. So, I can now activate my flea token to move away if I wanted to. Exactly. It's flee token, so he's used it to flee. Okay, I'm going to use it to flee. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Interrupt <laughs> that. Yeah. Okay. I See guess. Yeah. That's fine. So in that case, um, can I choose a different target, or is the attack canceled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no target. Okay. You have only yeah, because right. he technically he technically moved before you targeted. Yeah, right before. Okay. Yes. So I'm gonna attack Elmer Fudd for one instead. <laughs> I'm fine with this. So Elmer's damage, gonna take one. Damage is damage. Yeah, there we go. Then yeah. I am going to use my ability to pull <laughs> Elmer Fudd over here. My traps are gonna pop off, and Elmer's gonna take. 
Two damage. Just one very large swollen finger with like a yeah, bear trap exactly. stuck on the end of it. Yes. And that'll put Elmo at 11 damage. Oh, so close. Oh, sorry. I mean, fair game. Good play. Yeah. What? <laughs> fair and balanced game. Very fair and balanced game. Um, <laughs> I'm totally think... rooting for both of you. I promise. <laughs> I think that's all I can do. Okay. You could choose to push me if you so chose. Oh, I could. That's oh, that's right. I can't push you. Which... Which stinks. I wish I could push you farther. Um, <laughs> Understandable. I don't think I want to push you here because if because if, if you got some crazy ability, I don't want you to be able to deal a bunch of damage to my characters. So, and reroll that die. So I'm gonna push you back to to where hence you came. Sure. <laughs> All right. Now Bugs Bunny is done. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to activate Taz. I'm going to pop this two over on Taz Tornado, which will give him a flea token again. Mm -hmm. And Taz is going to move over here. You have to roll. Roll that mayhem die. Still a, a star. Two. Yep. Now, I will end my turn. And at the end of his turn, deal two damage to Bugs. Which uh, Bugs Bunny is going to... See you later, Doc. He'll also deal two damage to himself, which will put him <laughs> on 13 health. All you need oh, is one damage. hit on both of them. <laughs> Somehow. Uh Or don't I'd be hit very impressed if you could pull it off. <laughs> don't hit either of them. Survive a round and then take them both out next round. Uh, but I am going to also play my last mayhem card. Ah, uh, what my is it? My high defense. Ah, uh, okay. Obstacle uh, and you gain a shield. The shield is going to block two damage. What a nice um, pawn. What move a nice an obstacle. I'm going to. So can I move any obstacle? Any obstacle. So I could do oh, this. No. Oh no. All right. I'm trapped in there with that. him. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, uh, the duck has to make stuff happen, which I don't know how much <laughs> he's going to be able to make it happen right now. Um, so. Make stuff happen, or like I said, make nothing happen. Uh, those like are your two. That. Those are your two options. So Daffy's got full health right now, mm -hmm. and Elmer, Elmer's not going to do anything super crazy to me. So I think the best defense is to move Daffy here to make sure that next turn, just in case there's some priority where we can move, you know, and such, that both of them can't get onto this particular... Sure, because he only needs one more ribbon to secure victory. That's right, a good point. Exactly. Um, my ability for the giant hammer does not work, does not trigger at all, and that's my activation. Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hmm. So I'm going to activate Elmer's Elmer's hair fertilizer again. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no one to give the poison to, I believe, because there's no one on my location. Um, so instead, I... Oh, let me move first. I'm going to move over to the Acme digging. crates. He's digging. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So he's going for Get something. what he needs. Hmm. That's not it. That's not It'll it. Come in handy no. later on, maybe, That's but it's not, not the victory point I was right. looking for. <laughs> I thought he might get it. 
Now, I've moved my character, but can I activate my flea token using my own character's move? Or does it have to be an enemy? Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. it's anyone, any movement, right? All right so Taz is going to use his right. flea. He's going to pop over here. Okay. Oh. Um, and then as part of Elmer's hair fertilize ability, because uh, I've got more than a three, I can discard my activated ability token, which will open up that uh, kill the wabbit ability if I want to use it later on. And that will be my turn. Okay. All right, Luke, you're back in this. I know. I'm slowly, surely trying to survive. So let me take these dice off and then... I do believe I want to place bugs at this tile. Okay. Now the dice and how they roll will determine where I would like to go places. That's the things and stuff and wow, things and stuff. There you go. <laughs> Those are some high one, dice there. one with a star on the mayhem and about average dice over here for Nat. All right. I'm Nat, crammed. you're kicking it off. Yeah, who who wants to go first? See, I'm at extremely high risk of both my characters dying and losing the game at this point. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so I have to be very careful. Big brain plays. Yeah, see, what I'm trying to do is just make sure that I don't kill both my characters this turn, or get them killed. <laughs> So I guess I have to activate Elmer first. Okay. Okay. All right. He's going to move to mm. the healing spot. Running for some health. A couple of damage. Okay. Reasonable, but very anticlimactic. Yes. And you know what? Just to be safe, I'm going to activate his Kill the Wabbit ability. And make that a two. Mm. No nasty star abilities, okay? Uh huh. Uh -huh. That'll be the end of his activation. All right, Luke, what are you thinking? I think. Therefore, you are. Huh. There's different ways I can approach this. And I think how I want to approach this is I'm going to move bugs. Oh, actually, before I move, I got to do my activation. So let me yep. do this in the correct order. I'm getting hasty here. So I'm going to do that. Slingshot. And activate my slingshot. Go over here. Take a token. And I'm going to go ahead and flip this. There you go. There we go. Take All it. Right. Um, I'm going to then activate... Now wait, because that's a white one. Does that does that remove or give? No, no. Only uh, white is a brown color. But uh, you get the victory point. Uh, oh yeah. And so now you didn't one. need to remove one from here. Yeah, because there is, there is only one victory point inside. The, oh, there's only one in there. Oh, it's only one nice. scrap in there. So if only Nat, you'd went there first. I could have won the game if you I went there. Won the game. Oh well. Um, Did want to risk it. So. Now you punch Taz in the face for three. Do I want to punch Taz in the face for three? Or do I want to punch Taz in the, in, in, uh, or Elmer Fudd? Mm, they're both, I think they're both three away, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Taz is, well, technically Taz is three away because of the shield. Yep. Um, Elmer Fudd is also three away. But I also want to make this a little bit more complex for Nat over here, because Taz is going to deal some damage to a bunch of people, including... That's him. true. That's true. So... At the end of his turn, yeah. Yes. So... Oh, but he has to... Taz is going to weaken himself before... Yeah. That's a good thought. Mm-hmm. 
Your brain is very wrinkly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because, all right, I think we're going to go hit up Elmer Fudd nice. for two. So okay. Elmer's going to take two damage. Yeah, that'll put him... Oh, I'll bring that five back, back to where he was. And then... So I can only pull Elmer. I can't push as much as I would like to. Um, I'm fine with this. So Elmer's going to move there. So Elmer does get to Taz take will knock him out. If Taz goes, he'll knock himself out. Yep. Oh, shoot. All right, that's my turn. <laughs> All right, well, it's Taz's turn. Taz with the big brain plays. I like this. This is coming down to like both people sitting and thinking for like this 30 game is very apiece. strategic, and I love it. <laughs> Being like, <laughs> how can we, how can we squeeze the last few moves out of this? <laughs> gonna do yeah. devil. <laughs> Taz will he's gonna activate his fighting ring ability mm -hmm. and move over here okay and I'll roll the mayhem dice oh, oh. well <laughs> um and then I get to move an obstacle and I'm gonna move an obstacle I'm going to move this obstacle. Mm. Okay. Yes. And then he's okay. going to end his turn. And deal so two damage Daffy's to himself. Two, and then Daffy's going to take two. <laughs> Indeed. It's not um, Actually, true. that's three because I'm actually on an obstacle. That's true. Yep. Yep. I like that. Still so close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Okay, so I, I can do this. So I'm going to place this one here. Ooh. I got to risk it. I got to risk it. So I'm going to go over here. Mm-hmm. So I have to re-roll this die. Still... Still okay. Still okay. Um, so, I'm going to do a melee attack to Taz, which I do believe defeats Taz, if I'm not it mistaken. It does. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. it does, indeed. Four to four. The next mm -hmm. person to gonna get this close, off a, uh, close off a ribbon or knock another player out has this game. This is a lot closer than I anticipated it being from those, uh, from those big moves Nat was doing early on. <laughs> I did say, let's see how long they can keep the lead. Um, I normally would be able to stun Taz, but Taz has been removed. Uh -huh. um, so I cannot do that. Uh, but that is my turn. All right, that's the round. Pull uh, pull those dice back on. Let's see where this goes. All right. I'll re-roll this mayhem die. Does Taz immediately come back? Taz will. <laughs> yep. Okay. In one of these two white zones here, your starting locations. And it looks like Nat is going to retain first player. Oh. Yeah, you're still retaining. Yep, still, first still, yep. still gets it. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was a one and a two. <laughs> yeah, these haven't been great, have they? What are you thinking, Nat? Um, I'm going to... So you get himself a flea token. And he's going to move himself over here. Oh. <laughs> Still the same. There you go. All right. And that will end his turn. He'll deal two damage to himself. And only two damage this time to Daffy. Yep. So I'll go ahead and get the damage out. Five total out of 11. I, this might, this might be where the game closes. It very Ten. well might. Can Bugs Bunny do it? So Thin, or Daphne, either can of Acme, them. Can Acme crates only be activated on your turn? On the on the turn of that character. Okay. Mm. 
So, I'm going to activate our friend Bugs Bunny. Okay. Targeting in a push pull. Mm hmm. I'm going to move over here. Now, normally I would heal, but uh, Bugs Bunny has no damage to heal. I am then going to deal three damage to Elmer Fudd, which I believe ends the game. That ends the game. I did not see it going this way. <laughs> I thought for yeah. sure, Luke. I thought for sure, Luke, you were gonna embarrass the ducks. I'm the winner, Doc. <laughs> I'm the winner. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That the, duck, the duck came so, back. So, for for people who've like skipped to final thought sections of 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 this video, I I have to say, I really like what's happening here in a skirmish game because what you've done, like for a you know family weight like mid weight skirmish game. You just focused on doing crazy things and having fun. Like it's it's every little bit of design I see in here is how can I do wacky, weird, twisted things, push and pull people, do damage in big patches, uh, you know, plant bombs, explode, explode acne packages, uh, and not still feel like I'm out of the game. Or like I love the fact that Luke, who was put on his heels early on, came back and was able to close this out. Uh I, I was I was really happy to not see Nat just walk away from it because he was clearly the more the more strategic player by far. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, uh, Alexio, from uh, from your from your experience in this game, uh, what uh, what when it comes to that design process, like how did you get to the point where this is right now? With many 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 iteration. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, many, many. <laughs> we played the game uh, like uh, 100 times yep. before, my, before I am okay with the design. And uh, two, 200 games, uh, I think, for the development. Nice. Very nice. Because uh, we, we check everything inside Luke, the game. Nat, first impressions? You all have, you know, first impressions matter, so. Yeah, I love how much strategy is in this game. Like it I looks very simple on the onset, yeah. But with the there's so much like interaction with the board, and you've got different ways of scoring victory points. That there's there's so many options for you, and yeah, it, yeah. From a strategic point, it looks like it's just a happy-go-lucky family game, but really, there's it, it can get deep. Well, there's I think I there's a lot more, and I think part of it is just this is a very small board state, so every turn you're triggering, bumping up against, being pulled into, like, there wasn't, one of the things that I have with a lot of skirmish games is so much space interacting with each other takes 30 minutes before you're in position to do anything. Like, this started off immediately and right away, you're in each other's face and you're ready to start engaging. Uh, Luke, what do you, what do you think? Uh, I was, I was about to say the same thing almost you said right there. I think uh, one, one of the biggest things uh, I'm not usually a big fan of skirmish games because it usually yep. takes a little bit more extra time, but this game actually gets you into the action incredibly quickly. I also really dig how, you know, there's a lot of strategy. And for me, I'm a big fan of programming style games. And you don't usually see that in a skirmish style game because usually skirmish style games require like you play a card down, does damage and this. Well, here, the 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 actual strategy is through the actions that you're taking with your characters and the locations that you're going to like pulling and pushing with bugs was a lot of fun and then setting yeah. up the traps to deal lots of damage and even taz and in inherently himself like i actually kind of used in my head as like my own like leverage of all right taz is gonna deal two damage to himself every single turn so how can i force nat to like move taz to particular locations to ensure that um, it will be dealing damage to both himself and Elmer and things like that. And I really dig that type of strategy. And especially like knowing that you can move to a location to reroll the, the Mayhem die, which would actually possibly either do more or less damage, I think is super cool. I think it's super awesome what this game has done. And it's all Looney Tunes thematic. Like, it's great. It's absolutely the big, fantastic. The big thing I'm seeing... 
Yeah, the big the big thing I'm seeing from the games that we've played so far in this in this uh, Simon uh, uh, Warner Brothers mashup uh, has been uh, intro level kind of family games that we're going to see on on retail shelves. Like we're going to see them in big box stores and stuff like that. That I think genuinely will introduce people into the hobby in the correct way. Like, and and I say that because like there's a lot of games that come out that have really cool themes or seem really cool on the cover, but you get down to the core box of it and you're like, this isn't this isn't really the best version of our hobby. Um, I'm excited to see a publisher that knows games and, and a designer that clearly knows games and games design uh, matching up with some IPs that just people know and love. People will pull this off the shelf because it's because uh, it's Looney Tunes and then they'll find a, a cool game inside, which is exciting. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Luke will do it as well. Yes. <laughs> But either way, uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, Alexio, thank you for hanging out and uh, hopefully enjoying watching your game being played. Hopefully we didn't mess it up too tragically. Um, I, I appreciate that the Ducks won. Uh, for anyone that's watched to this point, please leave a comment down below. What other Looney Tunes characters would you like to see incorporated into, uh, into the system here? What are you excited for? Uh, and if you are backing this over on uh, the Kickstarter, make sure to swing over and leave a quack in the Kickstarter comments because it is literally my favorite thing ever to see. Uh, all that being said, big thank you to Simon for sponsoring this video. Big thank you for Warner Brothers for collaborating and making all of this possible. And now I'm going to throw to myself saying goodbye to everyone once Can again. Can I add just one thing? Impossible. That's all, folks. <laughs> So that was a uh, that was a gameplay, right? I mean, how good, how good did Looney Tunes get? That helter skelter skirmish, back and forth fighting. Man, I, I cannot wait to get a physical copy of this one uh, of this one to the table. I'm I'm genuinely looking forward to it. It blew away my initial expectations of what this kind of mashup was going to be. All that being said, if you made it to the end of this video and you are backing the Simon Kickstarter, make sure you leave a quack over there on their page. Uh, that, like always, is a very important lit litmus test to make sure that you've actually watched the entirety of this video and genuinely makes my day every single time I see it. 